I looked at those early church writings. You know they believed Mary was a virgin? They had bishops very early on. St. Ignatius talks about where the bishop is, the Catholic Church is. Ignatius, Irenaeus, 2nd century, talked about the Eucharist. Basically said, this is in a miraculous way we don't understand Christ himself. He left himself to us. Ignatius said, have nothing to do with the heretics for they do not confess that the bread and wine become the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Irenaeus said, well, if Christ were other than from God, how could he take ordinary bread and wine and make it into himself? I mean, Igna Irenaeus saw that. He saw the ludicrousness of the whole thing. He said, hey, wait a minute, this guy's got to be God or he couldn't try to pawn off some idea like this. The early church believed in purgatory. The early church talked about baptism of babies as being nothing but apostolic. The early church confessed sins. They did it publicly a lot of times. But that kind of got bad, you know what I mean? Because you start confessing and all of a sudden you're getting more and more people coming into the, the church who, who are curiosity seekers and you're going to stand up there publicly and go, yeah, you know, I, uh, I beat my wife and uh, ran around with a neighbor lady. Uh, you people ain't going to tell anybody, are you? <laughs> yeah, I like the penances back in the old days, you know. In the old days, there were three sins that got you kicked out of the church. Apostasy denying Christ, murder, and adultery. And if you did those big ones, you got pushed out of the fellowship. And to get back in, you had to do major league penances. If you were a stone cutter, Victor, then you would have to cut stone for free for six months for the church. And the community would take care of your wife and kids while you were for six months doing this. And that's where indulgences came from, by the way. See, Victor's my friend. So I go to the priest and I say, Victor has three little children. I'm going to cut stone for him this week. Let me cut stone. I'm a stone cutter. I'll take Victor's week. Let him go home to his family. Indulgence. I'm stepping in and I'm taking part of his penance. Because he's my brother in Christ. That's a pretty cool idea. But see, it gets abused. People look at it and say, Ah, the Catholic Church come up with them stupid indulgence ideas. They had indulgence back then. And as I read more and more, I saw, Oh my gosh. If you go to this with an open mind, you've got to say the early church was Catholic. They believed you had to be baptized. That was part of salvation. They believed that when you were baptized, your sins were washed away. You died and arose with Christ. They believed that you could pray to saints. You could pray to Mary. If you go to the catacombs, all through the catacombs, in the stone walls of the catacombs, Saint so-and-so, pray for us. It was clear. It was in the stones. So I started thinking, whoa, if you got people disagreeing on what the Bible means, well, maybe you ought to just look at what the early church thought the Bible meant because they were right next to Christ by century two, three, four. Lady in one of my Bible studies, I said to her, you know, we disagree pretty much. If St. Peter were here, Oh, and by the way, where I was, you couldn't say St. Peter because I was always corrected. We're all saints. So I said, okay, if Mr. Peter were here. <laughs> you know, it always confused me too. It always got confused because it's like the apostles couldn't be saints, but I could. You know, there's a certain gig in that. You know, we're all saints except St. Peter and St. Paul. We couldn't call them St. Peter and St. Paul. We had to call me. Of course, that's kind of related to another idea that always confused me, which is, I would ask these, especially the guys, you know, there, there's, a certain, there's a certain ego involved in being your own theologian. And I would ask the guys, I'd say something like, so, are you infallible? I'm not, but the Holy Spirit is. And I have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay. So that means that you are very, very confident that your understanding of Scripture and the conclusions you've come to about what it means to be a Christian, faith and moral-wise, are correct. Yes, because I'm guided by the Holy Spirit. So, really then, you're kind of like a Pope. That the Holy Spirit is guiding you to truth. He's protecting you from coming to the wrong conclusion. I don't understand something. How come 
like you guys are allowed to have millions of your own popes and we're not allowed to have one. I, my head was just going like this. Okay, it was just going like this. And again, this is not to impugn Protestant Christians, but it is to say that the system doesn't work and it's indefensible and it does not match with the first centuries of the church. One final thought. I'll let you go. I'm, I have to cut this way short. I have this on DVD, a much longer version. It's somewhere in Baton Rouge. Okay? I don't know where it is. None of the stuff came through. You know? Early church basically tried to win converts. Can you imagine trying to win converts by telling people, oh, you know, uh, one other thing i got to tell you if you want to become one of us. Uh, we do get together, and we have the appointed uh, people say the prayers that uh, the, this guy left us, and, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, the, the body and uh, the, the, the bread, see, the bread and the wine there become him, and we eat him. Can you imagine people going, <laughs> wonder how many converts they lost with that gig, huh? Why would you make up something so stupid if it wasn't true? Why would you try to convince anybody of something like that? Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, it just becomes him and we eat him. And even people in those days who only had a high school education are going to go, it's bread, man. <laughs> it's, it's bread. <laughs> right. All right, I'm going to have to cut it short, way short, but... Just a few of my thoughts on my journey back to the church. By the way, there's only one reason to be Catholic. Anybody ever ask you? There's really only one reason, one reason alone. Because it's true. If it ain't true, get out of here. There's a lot easier religions to be. Get out. But if it's true, then it doesn't matter what the church tells you. It doesn't matter whether you agree with them or whether you don't. Because if she's true and Jesus established her, then she's got the authority. And if she says, don't leave your wife, she knows what she's talking about. Okay? Thanks, man.